Hi, and welcome to EnglishForItaly.com. Thanks for joining us as we continue our search for the Plumovian hero, Robert Falcon Scott. In part one, we saw how, as a port, Plymouth and its surrounding area has produced or welcomed a whole host of fascinating explorers and adventurers. This was largely thanks to the port's strategic position within the context of colonialism and exoticism. We also saw how this journey has also been made through art. In this short video, we will simply try to show you something of the man in his hometown of Plymouth. Today, Plymouth is a provincial city cut off both geographically and politically. In Scott's day, that is, the second half of the 19th century to the first decade of the 20th century, Plymouth was a fundamental port of the empire. Its position meant that it was vital for both defence of the island or from where an attack or simply an exploration could begin. Towards the end of the 19th century, Antarctic exploration became the latest foreign field to stir the British imagination. Scott was born into this context, into a maritime city with a thirst for adventure. Captain Scott was born here, in Outland's house, on the 6th of June 1868. The house is no longer here, but what is here is St Bartholomew's Church. Scott hasn't been forgotten in the local community and here in the entrance to St Bartholomew's Church we have some pictures dedicated to his memory. Here we have a rare image of Scott's family home. For a church there is in fact a lot of space dedicated to the man. For many years a kind of relic was kept in the church before being put in the local museum for safety. And here it is, Scott's signature carved onto a birch tree that stood in his garden. There is more memorabilia here celebrating the local hero. We've got photos, newspaper articles, academic articles and depleons. Okay, we're following you, Simon. Firstly, we have Scott Road. This commemorates the fact Scott's house once stood here. Secondly, we have Oates Road. Captain Oates was the second man to die during the long trek back from the pole. We have Wilson Crescent. Wilson, a fantastic artist and scientist, died next to Scott in their tent. And Bowers Road. The brave Scott, Henry Bowers. There's even Terra Nova Green. 
in remembrance to the ship. Two outdoor plaques commemorate Scott and his expedition. While the pub next door has a few treasures too. Scott was baptised here in Stoke Damrell Church, which is just a few minutes away from his family house. So here we are at St Mark's Church in Ford, which is a few uh, minutes away from Stoke Damrell and Outland's house. Although the original building is not here anymore, what we do know was that Scott sang here in the local choir. What else do we know about Scott's childhood? We know that Scott's dad owned a brewery here in Hogate Street. Hogate Street is in the Old Port area of Plymouth, the Barbican. Scott's team carried out many scientific experiments and observations whilst on the Antarctic. In fact, it is no surprise that Plymouth's Marine Biological Association was a leader in scientific discovery in the field, even in Scott's day. The Scott Memorial, which tells us of the last moments of Scott and his polar team. The monument was built in 1925, right here in Devonport, Scott's birthplace. It overlooks the River Tamar and can be seen by all Royal Naval vessels that sail by. In December, the last horse was shot and killed and used as food for the men. The dogs were sent back to base and the men now had to manhaul and pull their own sledges. Scott considered this a more noble form of transport on the ice. On January 17, 1912, Scott and his men made it to the South Pole. However, unfortunately for them, the Norwegian flag was already there. Now, Scott had to travel 900 miles in order to survive. Blocked in his tent for 10 days, Scott continued to write in his diary. However, on the 29th of March, he stopped. He had no food, no water, and was a mere 11 miles away from his depot. Regarding Oates, we now have some of the most famous lines in British history. Here is an extract. He slept through the night before last, hoping not to wake, but he woke in the morning, yesterday. It was blowing a blizzard. He said, I'm just going outside, and I may be some time. He went out into the blizzard, and we have not seen him since. <laughs> 